Hey, Abundant Parents, it's Leah. I have Ode here, and she was my guest this month on the Abundant Parent Community Workshops. We talked all about nature's remedies to really help you through stressful times in your life, not only for yourself as a busy parent, but also in helping you support your children, your family. We discussed essential oils, we discussed flower essences, how the body works to use those things, and then really great products that you can use to bring into your family today to help support you. So now I have Ode on, and she's going to be showing us all about how essential oils are made, and then a little bit of, of information about how you can blend them yourselves, as well as flower essences, how you can make blends yourselves to really support your family in all the detailed ways that you might need it best. Ode, thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom. Well, thanks, Leah. I'm honored to be here with you and to share all this. Um, this is really my passion, so it's, <laughs> you cannot stop me. <laughs> You know, that's the really cool thing I found about people who are in the healing arts or people who go, who create businesses to, to help people and to heal people is that we feel so good doing the work. We're so passionate about the work that we do that it doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it's a passion more than anything else. So, so please stop me if I go too far into details and let me know how, how detailed you want everything. I'm, but. I'm personally a total nerd when it comes to learning stuff. So it, that being said, I probably won't stop you too much. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so could you tell us a little bit, I know, you know, essential oils, I know that you can make homemade oils where you put herbs inside of oils and you let them sit in a dark place for four months, but that's not the same thing as a, a highly concentrated essential oil. So can you tell us a little bit about how that's made? So yeah, that's the difference between plant tinctures. What you're talking about mostly is extract or plant tinctures. Tinctures is made in alcohol, but it's the same um, basically um, method of, of extracting and soaking into um, a solvent, whether it is oil or um, alcohol. It's really sucking out of the plant the chemical components. When we talk about essential oils, it's um, a little bit more precise. Um, when you do a tincture or an extract, you take the whole plant and it sucks whatever it can suck out of the plant. And, and give it you know, to the carrier oil or to the alcohol. Um, for essential oils, it's a little bit different because first of all, not all plants are aromatic. So it means that not all plants produce essential oils. So um, you have to select the plants first. And then um, the way of extracting um, only the essential oils is a whole process with um, distillery, you know, the distillation um, method. It's a little complicated. I mean, you cannot do this at home um, uh, by yourself unless you have all the apparatus and all the, all the um, equipment to do so because you have to heat some water and then the steam will go through the plant material and will extract the essential oils that will go through a whole system of um, tubes and cylinders and everything and then be collected at the end of the process. I'm totally picturing something from like a movie with the mad scientist with like the glass bobbles and the steam. Exactly and the <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So essential oils, you don't really you usually don't make them at home, and this is why it is very important to really source them um, and know how they've been distilled, and in order to have the proper um, qualities, the healing properties of the oils is really dependent on what part of the plant has been distilled, what plant has been picked up, the way it has been picked up, how it has been, you know, um, harvested, and where it has grown, if it has some pesticides around it and everything. Uh, I will never insist enough on the importance of high quality essential oils to have therapeutic benefits. If you want to diffuse them in a room for just the fragrance, it's fine. But if you really want to go deeper in the healing aspect of those, it has to be really made um, in the art of the science of distilling the essential oils, but also in the way they're um, harvested and the way they're grown. That makes, that makes a lot of sense because you hear this all the time when, when eating organic foods and how, the, how important it is you are what you eat. So if you are um, eating food with chemicals on it, it's, it is impacting your body. And I can see how that could that could totally be the same for essential oils. I just love that you've shared with us all about how essential oils are actually made because we get these little tiny bottles and, and sometimes we don't really think about 
how much plant product has to go into making them. Could you share with us now a little bit about how we can blend oils to different um, oils from two different plants and how we can blend those to support ourselves? Yes, the first thing I would like to really emphasize on is dilution. Um, first of all, it's not because it's a natural remedy that it's totally secure. It still is some chemistry and it may interact with your skin and uh, create some damage to your skin or some damage to your liver. Um, so really make sure that whatever you use, um, even some, I know some essentials can be used pure, but I'm, we're not going to get into there. I would really recommend to dilute them. The first reason is for the security and safety reason. The second reason is because um, the more you dilute them, the more subtile they become, and then um, the more holistic you become, and then you can also um, reach your energetic and your emotional bodies. I really encourage to um, use a carrier oil. It could be whatever oil that you have available. It could be coconut oil, even olive oil. If that's all you have is your kitchen, olive oil or canola oil, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Please use something. It will benefit your kids and yourself. First, because kids do not take the same um, concentration of oils than the adults do. It will protect your skin and, uh, and the integrity of the body. And also it will, um, really enhanced the um, the emotional aspect of, of the treatment that you want to do. So please dilute. And I have um, pulled together um, um, guidelines, some guidelines for dilutions. And I think, Bia, yeah, you're going to share this as well. Absolutely. We're, we're sharing a ton of resources in the Facebook group. I will link that below this video. I really encourage you to join the group because you'll be getting a lot of resources, not only from, from Ode, but a lot of the guests that I've had on my previous workshops. But we will definitely do a post specifically with this great table that you've created for dilution because it is, it is, you can't underestimate the effectiveness of natural remedies but then alternatively of what can happen if you're not using them properly and they do need to be respected. Exactly. And then, as you said, you know, it's taking a whole field of lavender to make just a teeny little bottle of essential oil. It's taking tons of rose petals. So somehow when we're using essential oils, we're destroying the uh, natural resources of the planet. So I really um, urge you to, you know, put the intention of, of receiving this gift of nature as a true treasure, um, because it has taken a lot of resources to produce them. It is very powerful, but if we put the intention of really receiving this as a treasure, it will empower it so much more. Um, and also make sure that you source um, these centers where they come from. I know, um, frankincense has been over and over used, which it's a wonderful essential oil, but now it's being really um, endangered um, via the frankincense itself. So um, please try to find out places where it's taken from sanctuaries and it's not destroying destroying the planet. Be responsible in the way you, you buy and use oils um, and, and they will give it back a thousand times bigger. So tell us a little bit about if we want to support our system and we're feeling like we maybe need one, more than just one essential oil to support us, tell us what we can do in regards to blending oils to support our mental health. Oh, um, that's a tricky question because I'm not going to provide just one oil. <laughs> um, we talked about how essential oils um, really interact with our limbic system and brings us to um, emotions that can be either good or bad according to the, the fragrance. The one fits all is really not my motto for my practice. I really like to um, tailor and really customize the blends that I make first because the fragrance, um, I may love it, but you may absolutely reject it and tell me, ah! <laughs> I really don't like that just because we don't have the same background, we don't have the same childhood, and we don't have the same memories. And also, I really like to, to go deeper in, you know, um, what's uh, preventing us from, uh, from being 
peaceful in our lives. What I'm going to do, if, if you're okay with this, I'm just going to give you groups of essential oils and flower essences that you can easily find. And it's up to you to really decide, um, oh, I like this one better, this one uh, uplifts me uh, better. Um, so um, it's really up to you to, to decide which one suits you best. I'm really curious because I know for me, I absolutely love the smell of, of citrus oils, but sometimes when I wear them, I'll have people that, um, that they're a little bit off put by it because they think it smells like something that's a memory for them. So I'm really curious to hear, to hear. Yeah. What oh, it's the same thing with my dear lavender. To me, it's my childhood, but to some people it's the air week in the bathroom. So <laughs> It could be linked to any kind of uh, reaction. So, but you're very right. The first family of ores that I'm going to talk about is the citrus. Um, whatever um, citrus you may find the most appealing to you, whether it is a lemon or um, mandarin or sweet orange or neroli or a petit grain, petit grain. <laughs> so uh, all this um, citrus family. Um, when you think about the zest of an orange or a mandarin or lemon, we've all done this experience of just pressing it in front of the flame of a candle and then the flame will go all sparkly and all everywhere. And well, if you think about the citrus essential oils, it's, it's about the same. It brings the sparkle of joy in your life. It's really the childhood um, feeling of being just happily happy in who we are um, through these oils. So pick whichever one you want. They will support your emotions. Um, then I have a special one for moms and it's the uh, geranium for us women. It's really the support for, uh, for the moms. It's our um, weapon and our guard against negativity it will really be our armor against you know um, negative people but also toxic um, thoughts um, so use and overuse geranium if you like the fragrance because it's 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 really um, a great support for our feminine system then we have the frankincense so it's very rare now essential oils but essential oil but um, if you find a good one it's it's a great one to use because it's really really the all of the transition of me the transition would be to be an expat but also it could be the transition after um mourning someone or after um, a period of life that you don't have anymore and that you have to adjust to a new a, a new era of your life so it's opening all the possibilities and making you more confident and secure about the future and then if you need you know some strength um, to feel strong and confident and do not doubt of yourself anymore well think about the big great trees there they grow tall and straight and no matter what happens they are there <laughs> so for example the pine essential oil is great support the, the um, nervous system so it will calm down all the overthinking but also it will empower you and give you some strength and good roots and grounding and be sure of what what you do no matter what happens no matter the the elements around you flower essence in the back uh remedies exist from for pine it's called pine um and it's this one is really good for guilt when you feel guilty for not inviting your mother-in-law or <laughs> feel guilty because you're not perfect it will really support you and ground you into this feeling of i am enough and uh, i am loved another great tree is the uh, sweet chestnut it's in the um, the back uh, flower essences um, the sweet chestnut is really also there to give you courage and be undefeated and also to stop your mind from going crazy into crazy thoughts about self-doubt and I'm not sure of and what if. It will really ease the mind and anchor you into this feeling of um, I am strong enough to, to face this and I will, I will manage. <laughs> There's the uh, bay laurel. This one is really the anti-stress and um, also will calm the nervous system. So it will help you with, uh, with anxiety. There are so many, but I think these are the easy ones to find that you can find on a shelf wherever you go to uh, Whole Foods or uh, Sprouts or, you know, um, th this kind of stores. And then the back flower remedies, they can be found almost everywhere as well. So uh, it's something that's, that's available and really pick up the ones that are, that are that appeal to you the most 
Absolutely. And I love that so many of the, the essences in the sense that you recommended aren't necessarily what are socially considered feminine. So even if there's some dads out there that wanted to use some essential oils, that they wouldn't walk around feeling like they're smelling too floral or whatever, exactly. whatever yeah. their concerns yeah. may be. Except um, for the geranium. The, the geranium is really the one for women. Uh, plus it's very flowery. The essential oil is very um, like citronella almost. So um, yeah, it could be, you can love it or really not like it, but um, all the rest, all the other ones are, can fit um, male and female personalities. Thank you, Ode, so much for sharing all of this information. Ode was a guest on the Abundant Parent Community Workshops. You can access her workshop as well as the workshops of all the other experts I've hosted on theabundantparent.com. You're going to want to click on the tab that says membership. You can find Ode in our Facebook community all month, giving all of her expert advice, commenting on your questions and our posts. All of her extra information from the workshop will be available there. I invite you to join. I will include that link below. In the meantime, you can also find Ode on Instagram and Facebook. Ode, could you share with us where they can find you? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's called Ode to Joy, Ode like my name, A-U-D-E, and the Instagram is the same. It's Ode to Joy and then underscore Ode à la joie, which is the French translation for Ode to Joy. And I hope I will be bringing you some joy. And thank you so much, Leah, for, um, for inviting me and letting me share all this passion of mine. Absolutely. And for those of you who have signed up for the membership who, or who plan to, Ode is offering a 30-minute free session to get a customized consultation on how you can support your family through essential oils and flower essences. She does create products herself um, with, with her expertise and her background and all of the tools that she has on hand. So she can create specialized blends uh, for flower essences and essential oils for you and your, and your family to help support you. Oh, thank you so much. And, and I hope you have a really great day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.